Well, this is going to be a bit of a sporty sail. We've only just come out of the, uh, the shelter of the anchorage and uh, we're into the Sound of Mull and we got uh, 20 knots of breeze, gusting 25. We've only got the, uh, the main out at the moment and uh, lucky enough we put a reef in it <laughs> before we hit this wind. So it's going to be an interesting day down to open. Hey! <laughs> Well, it's better than having no wind, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. That's Tobermory over there, where we were the other day. And there's the lighthouse, where we had that lovely walk to. in a couple of hours and we are slowly making our way down the sound of mold towards Oban. We've been tacking up and down because the wind's coming pretty much in the direction we want to go but uh, winds have been gusting kind of 25 knots and we are we're currently at 20 and we're doing nearly six knots through the water so uh, we're flying along having a lovely sail. Ready to tack? Yeah. Okay, let's tack to port. To port. Coming about. Slowly. Come up here, come up here. Now we've got some speed on it. We didn't have speed. Now you see when you're the helmsman and you want to put a tack in and you've got your raymarine set on steer to wind, all you do is press a button and the autopilot sends it across onto the other tack and it's up to your crew member to do all the work with the lines. So the other autopilot is here, <laughs> autopilot one, autopilot two, manning the winches. Does the autopilot two also make the tea? Autopilot one doesn't make the bloody tea, does oh, it? Auto, well, so why no. should autopilot two? <laughs> I thought autopilot two was more useful. Because <laughs> if it isn't, then why would you have two autopilots? <laughs> you can have one if you just want one. I'll go and have a sleep. <laughs> so we're in an unofficial race. All sailing is an unofficial race, obviously. Um, our, our target is over here. You see him. No, we're not, we're not gonna name the boat. We're not for naming names on this channel. Um, but uh, 
we've been tacking backwards and forwards and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they got a much better angle than we did on the tack. Now that can mean one or two things, either they've trimmed their sails completely differently than they've done for the rest of the morning, cross. The wind changed direction where they were versus where we were to allow them to get a better angle, cross, that didn't happen. They've put their engine on to get a slightly better angle and on motor sailing to basically get themselves around the headland so they don't have to put another tack in. Tick! That is what's happened. But you can guarantee when we get near them that engine will be off. Obviously we have never deployed such despicable tactics ourselves in an unofficial sailing race. However, what I will say is we did a brilliant tag. We've got very close to the shore and because it's lovely and deep here, which is amazing, very, very different to Conway. And it's allowing us to head straight down the channel. So we're doing six knots and uh, I think we're going to be able to get ourselves straight down the channel here and we may avoid another tack. So all, all of that watching Sail GB um, and uh, Sail Grand Prix, sorry, that I like watching. If you don't watch that, watch it, it's fantastic, um, has paid off. I have realised there is a ship coming towards us and we are probably going to be totally in its way. I need to go. Sir David. He can't get past us. We overtook him before. He's got more sails out, he still can't go faster. I can see what the difference is. What's that? He's got his spray hood down. Ah. They're getting absolutely hammered by the wind. What the, the, the other difference is they haven't got one of our cheat sheets. Our <laughs> sail trim cheat sheets. That's if we had one of them, he'd be past us by now. That's it. And he is a 40 something, he's a 42. Yeah, he's a big boat. <laughs> not that they're bothered, because we're not in a race. No, we're not in a race. We're not no, in a race, there's no. nothing official, there's no official race going no, on. No, no, no. Whenever two sailboats are going yeah, in the same you, direction, it's never a race. Lot. Step away from the area. <laughs> it's not a race, you can wave all your life. Is he waving, is he? Yeah. Iota. Yeah. He wasn't looking 
where he's going, look those two, look at which one. So we're racing along, we're still doing seven knots. Got our friends in the boat behind. Who reduced their, they're actually busy reducing their head sail actually a bit, because it is getting a bit breezier. We're controlling the main, so we've opened the jammer, we've got the main on the winch, and what we can do is we can, as the gusts come through, we can just release a bit of main, take that pressure out of the main sail, and then we can uh, pull, haul it back in as the wind calms down again. And that's how we're controlling the boat today. It's working well so far. Well, we've reached the end of the Sound of Mull, and it's blowing a hooli out here now. We've got 25 knots of breeze. We've only got about two hours to run, and we'll be in our marina for the night. It's been a great sail. A lot of sunshine, lots of boats. It's been a great day. Lots of breeze as well, which has been good. Mm. But now there's, uh, there's quite a lot. Let's have a look. Oh, it's just dropped, typical. Sails, we've reefed in nicely. And that's Duart Castle on the end there. We're looking at this land, the wind's coming from over that land, so we're getting a little bit of protection at the moment. We've got to go right across the bay, and it's going to get breezy. So we've reefed right in. So, see you on the other side. Okay, so we may have timed things a little bit incorrectly. See a rib going through there at the moment. This is Lady Island. And the sounder ball is down there where the rain is. It's raining here a bit. And we're trying to get across to the other side over that way. And this is a tidal race where the two areas meet. Very unpleasant bit of water. Just about making some speed over ground, so we've just timed it. We've any luck to get through, hopefully, without getting too wet in the process. We'll see. It's not all sunshine and ice cream. I guess it was too good to be true to do a whole passage in Scotland without getting wet. But it's been a great day so so far. We've got Lady Rock behind us. We've just entered the Lynn of Lawn. And Open is kind of straight ahead on our bow. We're just going a little bit further north to our marina for the night. And we should be there in just over an hour. It's been a great day. Okay, so what are the benefits of not being the skipper? in this weather you can go and make a cup of tea now you wish you weren't skipper don't you yeah. hey fender monkey if i'm here getting wet you're going to get wet in a minute because we need the fenders and the lines doing so get out from underneath where it's nice and dry and come and get your air messed up how long how long have i got 15 minutes Look at that over there, the sunshine is on its way. 
the sunshine is on its way. I think that'll get to me. I'll be getting a tan as I'm getting those those uh, fenders out. It better not be, I tell hey, you. Yeah. Well, me getting wet wasn't in the contract, and your contract was a bit like Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory. There's pages and pages and pages of it. What I've got to do when I go to the toilet, how I've got to make his tea, what I have to do in the mornings when I get up. I don't remember signing that or giving it to you to sign. You didn't sign that. You didn't sign. Well, I seem. I feel like I've signed it since I joined the crew. All these rules, so many rules now, including I have to get wet when we're going in. Uh, I'm sure there's lots of gout clauses for the skipper. <laughs> We have arrived we checked in about 45 minutes ago and um, we've been talking a lot about uh, trekking with Dave well where we are where they've put us on the inside of the breakwater it is a trek and a half to the marina offices and the showers and more importantly it's a trek and a half to the pub now this is the sort of trek I don't mind especially when you go past some lovely boats let me show you we've come up with a jingle for Dave for his new cha trekking channel are you ready Tracking with Dave. <laughs> and that just about does it for Dave and Robin for today. Thanks for sticking with us until the end. Remember, if you've enjoyed this episode, hit the like button. And if you've not done so already, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, put them in the box below. We really do enjoy reading all your feedback to our videos. The more likes, subscriptions and comments this episode receives, the more likely YouTube is to recommend us to people who may not have found us yet. So you can really help the channel grow by hitting the thumb, subscription and comment buttons. Finally, if you'd like to support us financially, why not be become a patron. For a small monthly fee of just £6 a month you can support the making of future videos. We're not asking you to fund our lifestyle unlike some sailing channels, we're just asking for a contribution towards the cost of producing these videos. All patrons get early ad free access to all episodes, exclusive behind the scenes video content and membership to a private WhatsApp group where you can keep in contact with us. To find out more about becoming a patron please click the link in the description below. Thanks again for watching, until next time, take care, bye bye. You don't need your hood up. Why have you got your hood up? It's not it's even still, raining. It is raining. It's spitty. <laughs> <laughs> My glasses are getting wet, okay? Right. right Trek it with Dave. Do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> so what have we been doing then? You tell him. Well, I was trying to convince Dave that this marina might be a good place to stop. But the pub, when we got there at five o'clock, was closed on a Tuesday at five. Uh, only day of the week it is to be fair but it was so we had to get a taxi into Oban which wasn't too bad so if you're coming to Dunstaffnage and you have to get a taxi called a few different taxis it was chucking it down at the time and we got into Oban for a tenner and uh, then uh, we managed to find a pub that was recommended to us for Guinness which didn't have Guinness had the pump yeah didn't have any Guinness though so uh, Dave became even more grumpy and uh, then we did find him at Pub of Guinness and then we've just managed to bring him home and now he's not been able to have as many Guinnesses as normal because it's such a long track do, do, do. <laughs> back to <laughs> the boat <laughs> along all the pontoons that if he'd have had another Guinness he'd have needed a wee sooner than we can get back I need so, a wee uh, now and yeah. it's a trek and a half back to the boat <laughs> I may be weeing over the pontoon in no, a minute. No, you will not, you will not <laughs> be weeing over the pontoon. Yeah. I refuse, I refuse to be seen, <laughs> be tracking with Dave, <laughs> weeing over the pontoon. Well, there we go. Maybe we could do weeing with Dave then. <laughs> <laughs> but we're making our way back to the boat. We have had some other beers, as you can probably tell. Yeah, So it's been an odd, odd one. It's going to be an early night tonight because I think we're both knackered. Yeah.